2009, we made history with the election of President Barack Obama. He called us to service, as there remains much work to do to end unemployment, poverty, and crime in our communities. There's so many books on how we can accomplish this. But this year, everyone's raving about this summer's hottest new book, The Solution for Black America, Reclaiming, Rebuilding, and Restoring the Urban Ghettos in America by Chicago's own Emmanuel Barbie. A graduate of Northeastern Illinois University, Barbie addresses key ways we back our families and communities. But unlike so many other books on this topic, Barbie captivates his reader, presenting solutions through a riveting life story. It's entertaining, it's different, it's exciting. The perfect book club selection. Don't be left out. Get your copy of The Solution for Black America, Reclaiming, Rebuilding, and Restoring the Urban Ghettos in America. Order today at Amazon.com. Welcome to Help Stop the Genocide in American Ghettos podcast. My name is Emmanuel Barbie and I am your host. Um, this evening we will examine what it means about reparation for American descendants of slaves. Uh, that's my uh, latest uh, episode. Um, in order to participate in this real-time event on Facebook, you must connect with me through Facebook Messenger as a voice call. And then I'll let you get on the air. Okay, so we're going to um, first look at what, what does it mean f um, for reparations. Reparations for s slavery is a proposal that some type of compensation should be provided to the descendants of slave of enslaved people in the United States in consideration of the force and uncompensated labor their ancestors perform over centuries. This compensation has been proposed in a variety of forms from individual monetary payments to land-based compensation related to independence. The idea remains highly controversial and no broad consensus exists as to how it could be implemented. How, however, ethnic tensions have flared between black Americans and black immigrants here in America. And a, a debate about identity in America, raising questions about how a changing black population increasingly diverse with immigrants and refugees from Africa, the Caribbean, Europe, and elsewhere, um, see itself as see, see itself and is seen by the American public. The question arises: Who is black? Black in America? Can there be unity based on skin color alone? Who gets to speak for African Americans? One source of contention is who benefit from diversity efforts. For example, a study published in the American Journal of Education in, in 2007 found that immigrants of children of immigrants, while making up only 13% of, of the nation, Blacks between 18 to 19 years old accounted for 41% of black admitted to Ivy League schools. As a result, a movement to declare who is entitled um, identify themselves as American descendants of slaves or ADOS, A D O S, rather than African Americans. YouTubers argue that people whose ancestors were enslaved have a, I guess, a just claim that black immigrants don't. We have been doing people of color politics, but if we want to talk about what people who have been identified as African Americans need and what we are owed, then we have to change that definition. They criticized former President Barack Obama 
for saying this is a nation of immigrants. We are not immigrants. We are we were property. We were chattel slaves. That's the difference. Now, everyone else have received rep reparations. Um, for example, uh, Japanese Americans, American Indians, and former President Barack Obama gave tw $12 million to victims of the Holocaust, which didn't which didn't even take place here in America, it took place in Germany. Yes, I believe black Americans deserve reparations, but as I've written in my revised book, The Solution for Black America, Second Edition, the financial elites want black Americans to remain a fractured population in order to remain um, superior, so to speak. Um, they want to see us divided. That um, This is a tactic that, that they use, divide and conquer. Uh, and um, between African Americans and African immigrants. They also done the same thing during the Civil Rights Movement. They uh, created the um, social class so that way um, black Americans that were forced to live in these, um, I would call it like the red zone areas or the quote unquote ghettos um, for those persons to um, integrate into other neighborhoods outside of the uh, inner cities and that's and they um, you know it's, they call that uh, integration but also um, it helped in the um, housing segregation so that's how come a lot of uh, quote unquote black middle class people they left the inner cities and so that that's what I talk about in my book and that caused a, a major division and also the financial elites um, also want to divide us based on social class as well as religion so as long as we're divided we can't you know really do any uh, major um, combat against what's happening unfortunately because of slavery and um, colonization or colonialization, all people of African descent suffer from this Willie Lynch mentality. The organization I'm trying to uh, get started here um, in the city of Chicago is called the Grassroots Community Activist uh, Institute. And uh, that's the whole purpose that I wrote my story. That's the whole purpose that I'm in the process of um, turning my book into a film. Those of you that have um, acting experience, come forth. Send me your email address. And most of all, support me by reading my story, The Solution for Black America, second edition, which is available on Amazon.com. Read that story. And all my Christian friends that's out there, pray that this book will get on that bestsellers list so that way I can move from behind this computer and start this organization um, in those high crime, gang and drug infested communities. The inner cities or the black ghettos. That's what this is all about for me. And I've been pushing my uh, organization online for um, over 15 years um, because I don't have support here in my city. So how can I do my job? I want qualified people that's going to help me and Sister Renee run this organization. So enough of that. Uh, I said my piece. I want to open up this um, discussion for people that want to talk about um, this issue of reparations. And so without further delay, the phone lines are now open. I just tell the listeners, um, yes, my name is Charmaine Betty Singleton. I am an evangelist, speaker, uh, motivational, transformational kind of person, and I love everyone. And I just believe that I just need to do whatever God calls me to do to bring this world together and for us to unite and for all 
uh, people, all women, all everyone to have the requisite piece of the pie that God ordained us to have. Amen. I I hear what you're saying. Okay. Well. Um. Okay. Well. What is your um thoughts about uh this new movement called Descendants or Af American Descendants of Slavery? You know, we're trying to get um reparations, and that's you know that's a big topic right now that's going on um in the media. So before you respond, I just want to say, uh, Japanese Americans they receive uh, compensation. You know, for what happened to them during World War II, uh, some Native Americans they also received some type of uh, compensation from Amer the American government, and even um, our former president um, Obama he gave um, the survivors of the Holocaust, you know, twelve million dollars for um, you know their pain and suffering, and that didn't even take place here in America. So you know. They all overlooking us as, you know, black Americans. So what's your thoughts about that? That's a hard question to answer in the fact that I don't know how they can give it to us without giving it to everybody else. And that's the problem, I think, with reparations. I believe, yes, um, if money should be paid, it should be paid. But how do you pay the money and to whom? Because we have been blended by every... Um, culture that you just said, um, then how does it actually go to the people that have been victimized by um, society? And that's the problem I see with it because you can see Asians because of how they look. You can see um, uh, Jewish people for how they get along and everything of that nature. But when it comes to us, we have been blended to every spectrum of the sun so who gets it and how is it going to be a portion because if you go back to the um constitution or anything of that nature if you had i want to say one fourth of um black blood in you then you were entitled to get reparations so there is a lot of people that's out there that will still get a piece of the pie so to speak if the money was to be allocated I understand what you're saying, and um, I just want to go a little further. What, what, what this movement, um, American descendants of slavery, so they're specifying specifically for uh, African Americans, you know, not, you know, the African immigrants, you know, from other parts of the world that, you know, just recently arrived. So that's one way I'm you can, you yes, can um, distinguish. I'm sorry to cut you off. Right, but I'm not, I'm not talking about um, anybody that came from any place else. I'm talking about based on the Constitution. The Constitution was only when basically before anybody else came from any place else. When you just had the so-called blacks and the so-called whites. If a white person was found to have one-fourth black blood in them, they were considered served to be a Negro too as well. So therefore, how do you go back to that? Because a lot of the masters were sleeping with the slaves. And so and that's part of the problem right there. That's why I said I understand reparations are um, something that can be done, but how do you adequately apportion it? That's the part that I don't see um, that it can be done fairly. I understand. Well, thank you for your um, call. I'm going to go ahead and get another caller on here. Did I have another caller? Um, go ahead, caller, say your name. and. My name my name is Mariasha Yahua. I live in the United Kingdom. Okay. And I am just here to share a word to all the beloved brothers and sisters. And I just want everyone to know that everything that is going on on the media right now, the truth is there on the media, but they're making the truth sounds like a joke. The truth of everything that is happening is on the cartoon, on the sim sim, and uh, it's been on the movie. They have been making all the movies and showing you the signs of what is coming, and they have been testing and preparing everything. Lots of things is going to shut down and my only advice is that the attack of everything is coming more on them. It's just like living in um it's just like living in Egypt. 
It's just like living in Egypt. It's just like the time of the Exodus again. And according to the scriptures, the 400 years is going to complete in a couple of days from now. And the media has been warning everyone in their, in their Oscar and everything, letting you know that time is up. They're all wearing black clothes and time is up again and this time that is twice they have given lots of people warning about that and people are not taking it seriously and there was a concert that the the a music constant constant concert that um, the and these people made it and uh, the russian made it and in that music concert they were singing about how American is going to go down and one thing I just want people to know is that media is showing they are doing everything they're letting everybody know but again they're giving people lots of frustration so that they will not understand they will not see it coming and I just want all the beloved brothers and sisters around there to prepare yourself prepare yourself the preparation is the spiritual preparation because when the father destroyed the world of Jericho, when he destroyed the world of Jericho, he saved the woman house. He pulled all the whole city down and only saved that woman's house. The, the prostitute that helped those that went and spied in there, those of you that know your scriptures, and those of you that do not know, you should just know that the Father is able to send all his Malak kings. Malak kings in Hebrews are angels to protect those. So I urge every brothers and sisters around there, irrespective of what they are going through right now, everything that they all see is test of what is going to happen. I just urge all of you to just pray and shield yourself with the blood of Yahusha Hamashak and ask for him for mercy because he, he promised and said he will keep us away from the destruction that is coming. And we have to hold him to that promise at this time now. We have to hold him to that promise. Everything is going to fail. Everything is going to fail. And the target is for us to depopulate the most of the black is just like the days of the exodus they are putting it all on the screen the scriptures let us to know that we should watch and pray for such a time like this is going to come so i urge everyone just to pray and go to the father and ask for mercy and ask for father for protection and ask for father for guidance because right now the father is giving lots of people from different places vision of what is about to happen and I urge people to pray, to set their clock up from 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock and get up and pray and ask the Father to reveal to each one where it's to go. Those of you who have access to run to African run, the scriptures let us to understand and says that, that we should run to the mountain when we see the sign of all these things. Now mountain, it doesn't mean the mountain, it means run to safety run to safety go to somewhere that is safety or gather yourself in groups together and pray and 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 ask for the shield and the protection so that the malak king of yahusha will give you people protection in that time i have a strong feeling something is bound to happen and it's going to happen this year and um it, my own prediction i'm looking at it like september I'm looking at it like September, something is going to happen, whatever it is that has been cooking, preparation, planning is going to happen. So lots of things is going to come. The target is to get all the whole people to fight against each other and then there will be lots of police, there will be shooting and killing. So they have tested one of the food shortage to see how people are going to react. So many other things is coming up. So I'm praying and I'm asking the Father to have mercy and save all those that are His because there is two kinds of seed. You, we all know, we all know American is the model Egypt that we have now because they are showing it and people are not seeing it because every the old Egypt has been destroyed. You can see American is the new one because they put new pyramid, new everything in there, big things. All those things are just signed, putting it in all your face to know what is going on. Amen. Hold on. Hold, 
Hold on, please. I got to stop you from, from there. I truly agree, and that's what I touched on before, too, you know, uh, in one of my uh, videos. But before you go, I just want to ask you, what is your viewpoints about, um, you know, this reparation uh, thing? Um, African immigrants, or uh, I can even say, like, European immigrants, and, you know, when they come over here, it's like a divide um, towards, you know... <laughs> African Americans, you know, it's like what I try to tell my people here is that you know they're just trying to divide us. You know, um, the, our brothers and sisters that's from the Caribbeans, they need to try to get reparations from you know Britain. And um, I would say uh, my, my brothers and sisters from the from the continent, they should um, try to uh, get reparations from those countries that colonized them. But we uh, here. Um, that's uh, African Americans, or now they call the, they have a new movement out called uh, American Descendants of Slaves. Um, yeah. We want reparations, but you know a lot of the um, I would say financial elites they're trying to divide us by saying, well, all blacks, you know, that's here in America. How do we know um, which group to give reparations to? That's just a cop out. Yeah, what, 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 what it is, what it is, is that when everyone, what they're doing is that they're trying to divide everyone. Because if they divide them, then the people dividing them will achieve what they want to achieve. But if they come together, they will not be able to achieve. So right now, they're putting confusion in all of them. And they're bringing, the, what I see is that it's the leaders, it's the top leaders of the black, the, the, the black and the black brothers and sisters, those are the top leaders that are manipulating everything because the top leaders of the blacks are in with the with the leaders that are making those decisions. So they are all doing all things. But I know that with prayer it's achievable because the scriptures let us to understand that it does not matter whether the, the top people do anything but the individuals, the widows, the orphans, and those struggling, hardworking ones, all they have to do in a situation like this is the further intervention that we need because these people have already made their program and they intend to follow their program. But if all the Caribbeans and all the whole black people could unite together to become one, then they can achieve some certain things. And if, you know, when they try to achieve it, they will scatter it. They will always scatter it. Without the further intervention, they will always scatter it every achievement that is why they keep them that is why you see the caribbeans are different that is why you see this they they're that and that is why you see that no one is even helping them their embassy is not helping them their other country is not helping them and they should not look for help to me my advice is that do not look for help from a man look from help from the one who created the man who is able to turn the heart of that man around for the favor of common good. And they used to let everyone know when they're saying, they says for the common good of man, for the common good. So let everybody should focus on the Father who is able, who makes them and who is able to turn them around. That is my advice. Because right now, they will give the head this money, they're pushing people to go and do riots, they're bringing immigrant, Islamic, and everything just to stay, stay, just to turn people to fight against each other. And that is how they get their power. And that is how they subdue people. And that is how they confuse people. But if the common people, or to me, I, I just love the way the father does his work. If the father can get just even two or three decent or widows or orphans, that could just take days and seek and stand in the gap, it is possible to achieve. With the Father, all things are possible. Amen.